Everyone warned me that prison would be an inhumane environment. It is. But I, I find it refreshing. The perfect microcosm of the animal world when an animal wants something, when it needs something. Other things need to be stepped on. Something like that. Yeah. Play the long game. You see, when I'm finally let out of this cage, it won't be to wage war, it will be to win one. You, sir, you need to focus on now. I've given you a chance to walk free, to put that gift of yours to work. If I were in your shoes, I would use this opportunity to find your justice, to kill your way to justice. And not for me, of course not, but for yourself, for your family, for them. Yo, ladies, gentlemen, and Reese's Pieces in Between, this is your motherfucking boy. This is your motherfucking spick. This is that dirty, fat, dick, nigga. So bubble again. And back at it again after, I guess, two weeks hiatus, after going week to week for a, a good, what, seven, eight episodes. I then kind of take a, a chill, I guess, during the fucking what you would call the holiday season, that spending season, the Sunday fun day with the fam season that just feels like it's barely any time of. And then it's just back off to work again. And that's one of the shits that... It, and I hate to bitch about my work because it definitely pays the bills and allows me to be able to I'm gonna maneuver certain living situations as it is right now. So it's not necessarily a terrible thing, but just a, you know, you wish you could do more kind of thing. And I guess that those kind of feelings would come up more than ever being at the end of the year. And, you know, you make those dedications at the beginning of the year or your, your resolutions, as it were, to try to better yourself in whichever which way. But we, we have to come to this time of recall or reflection uh, to be able to look back and to really you know try to see how we can better ourselves and how we can try to fucking make shit better because I feel especially after having little ones that's just the shit that you want the most you can give a fuck so much about personal desires but when you need to be responsible for others you just you feel the pressure a little bit more and you won't understand that until you have more responsibility whether it's you know someone dumping you with their nephew because uh, fucking parents are either in prison or addicted to some bullshit or just because you've met someone they had some bundles of joys and now you have some of your own bundles of joys on the way you add into the you know to the laugh factory of it but either which way once you see that you open up your eyes it, it definitely becomes overbearing or that's that, that sounds uh, sounds too bad i mean i i said burdom some once and i got in trouble for that shit but i mean that's just just what it is anytime and by human nature we're selfish and we look to you know for our own rejuvenation or for our own uh, health it just we're just selfish we're just selfish beings you can fucking lick a lot of ass and you know give a lot to charities but at the end of the day there's just something about us that just you know as a as just a as a necessity to live in the air that we grasp i mean we're selfish you know i mean unless i'm just that big of a piece of shit but i feel like a lot of people are too so i try not to try not to feel too bad but i see that and i notice that and once you can come to that realization you can then you know move forward i mean i it almost sounds terrible not to say you can't be hopeful or that you can't be on the positive end because i feel that's what definitely keeps us balanced you have to be positive you have to have a good clean spirit or else you are going to be constantly dragging you know into the ground and how they said biblically about being the creepy crawly things that pretty much roll on their fucking guts like a goddamn slug jar jar bings fucking job of the hut piece of shit yeah gotta call myself i'm not, I'm not trying to get that hype i'm just and I might have lost the fucking way to say, but the, the past two weeks, though, they just they've been a blur, and we get closer and closer into into what Christmas time. Uh, at the time of this recording, it's about a week before Christmas, or actually a few days away. So, 
Yeah, I'm excited about that. It, for for the fact that I've already had my Christmas present open, I gotta fuck with it. Hardly had time to play with it, and when I do, I always feel guilty. Like motherfucker, I could be doing this and talking to y'all, talking at y'all, and all this good stuff, and fucking being able to connect. It's it's funny how um, I recently had my homie come by just. Out of nowhere, random. He happened to be visiting his family out here, kind of thing. And his phone had died, or he had lost my number, or some bullshit. But the motherfucker remembered vaguely where I lived at, literally did a Google search, like to see the fucking maps. And this nigga saw my car in the driveway. I didn't think it was that fucking. Uh, what do you call it accurate or live so I don't know how the fuck exactly he did it but sure as shit he saw my fucking uh, he showed me the picture of it of our fucking cars in the driveway and I was like huh well that worked how you doing come on in and it just it, it had been dying to see him for such a long time but I wasn't ready I was on my belly fucking snacking with the old lady happy to have the boys down taking a nap like i wasn't i was not expecting to see anybody i was in my house clothes which means full of holes and and pizza stains and just all all imagine when you when you when you see some shiesty motherfuckers at at the walmart that's what i, I was the attire i was wearing as it comes by I just I did not have the house cleaned up fucking pulled the back was, every, everything was bad all bad but I was happy to see him and and, I, and I've definitely learned especially being my isolation tank in my fucking little cave in my own little world you know what I'm saying trying to stay away from the temptations that is the opposite sex as if I'm gonna get my dick sucked by some random bitch fucking A right if, if, if only I could if only I had it like that but I just, I laugh anyways. Uh, just being able to see him kind of just really fucking rejuvenated me. It's like, man, I miss having friends. You remember some friends? Remember when you laugh with your friends and you smile and you laugh again with your friends? Oh, I miss my friends. And I felt so stupid being so excited about that. But it almost actually, it, it cleared up my fucking nose. Another thing while I've been away, while you've been gone, is uh, fucking, I fucking had the shittiest cold. And at first I was like, I always get mad because the oldest, he's about five, he's in first grade, he's about to be six at the beginning of the year. Anyway, see, being in school, being a bunch of other booger-eating motherfuckers are obviously going to be bringing back the latest batch of communicable diseases. And this fucker brought me a head cold that hit the chest super hard. I actually almost went six hours without smoking. That's how fucked up it was. But anyways, I fuck, you know, just, you make it, you go through it. I found myself having to get fucking medicine again and again. And I don't, the only time I ever fuck with some medicine or some kind of thing besides a natural medicine is you just trying to get that fucking severe cough and cold bullshit. So, shouts out to that not fucking working and making feel like it does or at least giving some relief into it. Well, yeah, they're that fucking one, and tis the season for such bullshit, anyways. So, definitely mind yourself. And every time you see a crazy, kooky person with a fucking face mask on while you're shopping, they ain't that dumb. And as you know, as silly as sometimes we it, it would be, you know, to have to fucking carry some latex gloves or bullshit like that because it's just germs everywhere. Yes. But you really do got to watch yourself because some so silly, some so common just becomes, I think, a bigger epidemic. So much so, actually, and I know this is probably a hard left turn, but they had mentioned that syphilis might be incurable or one of those fucking STD sort of shits. And I would imagine, though, after I don't know how many years of the old penicillin game or whatever the hell you take shots of to be able to get rid of, you know, whatever sort of infested uh, shits you get for fucking dipping your wick or pick inside the whorish bowels of, of whatever is your neighbor it's it, it's obviously evolving it's becoming way stronger and it just makes me wonder if we're ever going to be in a world or at, if, if it's going to be in our lifetime to where we're going to see diseases kind of come back like the fucking plague you know and I don't wish that upon nothing, but I just I just know that eventually something's going to have to get strong enough to make it past what it is that we felt that we've built 
you know, like wall wise. I'm wondering, is that why the fucking the pressures to try to make Mars livable and sustainable? Like, are we, I'm pretty sure scientists have known this, and they're just it's a race to get the fuck out of here. And I mean, shit, they're even in the UK. They're gonna be doing the first head transplant, you know, and. It makes you wonder what kind of possibilities that shit has or, you know, I mean, all the restraints that I don't know too much about it. Y'all can fucking look it up. But when I heard that shit, I was fucking mesmerized. I mean, I, we're at the point to where we've barely done our first dick transplant. And I guess they gave this Indian cat and y'all can Google it, man with a bionic penis or something. And they, he, I think he hasn't had a dick since the age of six. So I don't know at what point he figured, fuck it, I finally want one. But they gave it a try, and apparently it works like a charm. And, I mean, you talk about yelling, go, go, get your dick, and not be able to fucking, you know, slay some demons. I, I would say that's highly incredible. But anyways, this guy, the reason why he even made it in front of news, because I remember reading about it before, I want to say, I want to say we might have reported on the Bomb Black, he's Mexican podcast, but I remember not too much about it, other than, I guess they had to like a recap with him, and he just talking about how he works 14 hour days and uh, he gets a lot of uh, proposals you know what i'm saying for the fuckies because what bitch who's a dick fiend wouldn't want themselves a bionic dick on a man you know i guess you're getting the best of two worlds you're getting that battery power operated you know slay machine also the not so creepiness of having to do it by yourself or with the robot but by having to be with another human being anyways this guy says that he passes up on so much ass because he's simply too fucking tired ain't that some shit and matter of fact not to get you know tmi but fucking a what is not TMI about fucking podcasts because you're going to reveal yourself to, to the whole fucking world not even knowing it. But since being in home with in-house ass, which is what's something I've always wanted, I have lost my desires. And it's not because my woman is not beautiful because if anything, she has become more beautiful. Her producing life for some reason has made me fall deeper in love with her than i could have ever imagined and that's that's that says a lot oh, simply because i just i thought i was so sinister that I, I i would just do it for tax breaks and benefits but it really and i wonder if it's kids i wonder if it just because i i fucking sit for so many fucking hours a day i'm just not as active i i could have sworn it would have been for being faithful because i felt like when i was holding it up i had energy i went out i went about i was in my day in the cutest little clothes and you know maybe want to work out and it just it just i feel like everything kept kept going kept spinning the gears kept grinding so i don't know at what point i lost that i want to blame it on being faithful girl says i just that's negative i don't know i don't know what y'all think i don't know what it was but definitely lifestyle change uh, just like changing the fucking diet you just you, you go without missing something and you know it's gonna show one which way or another name and as as much as like to being a strong uh spiritual man not just to one particular faith but just to the universe i kind of felt that hippie one love shit being a part of that but now apparently that's not a good excuse so I'm a bit confused, but I can see, like I said, this is have, having two little fucking bastards running around and begging for shit. And, you know, you want to teach, you want to learn, but you also, you know, got to do what you got to do. Shit like that can be so fucking tired to where it's just like, okay, you home safe? Oh, I'm, I'm so glad. I love you so much. Good night. <coughs> yeah. So I can see where this brother's coming from. And I, I feel like I really snitched myself, but. I'm hoping she don't fucking listen. I'm hoping you don't fucking tell her. You hear that? Don't tell her shit. Bitches that work with her, don't say nothing. Keep it to yourself. But no, I mean, I used to be quite the whore. And uh, shit, I don't know. I, I feel like anytime someone gets into something like that, it's because they are covering up some kind of void that's a part of them. And I know even... When I had become like a baby Christian and I was on fire for the Lord and I, I, I could have sworn I, I fought a couple of demons and won simply because of, you know, grace. Um, I still kind of did my thing, though. Like, I, I truly loved 
and I felt like I would fall in love daily. And I definitely mistook, you know, I'm saying lust for that, but I never hurt. And, you know, because I was so frank and so up forward, you know, it was almost like I was given a pass or like, and I was given the okay to continue. And, you know, and every, everybody has this vice. And I would hope that priests and pastors aren't there fucking holding it up in the backgrounds because you would want them to be as genuine as possible. But I was, as gen- I was genuine as fuck. And, you know, I, I, I wouldn't say I was a player, but I crushed a lot or crushed a few. I mean, it was really just me being happy, beginning with whatever was a different spice of, you know, whatever life I was in. And I think that's what kind of kept me going. She actually girl, caught me up. She was, uh, I don't know what the fuck, she had some bad dream. And I, I've been nothing but good, you know what I'm saying, for the most part. But she had caught, she had some bad dream about me creeping. Uh, you know, you know, it could be because she's pregnant. So I didn't, she probably just feeling insecure. But I asked her, you know, because then she started asking me about certain exes. And she knows about my Wedita fascinations. And then she fucking asked me, she said, well, how dark was the Puerto Rican? And I was thinking to myself, well, darker than I'd like. And she was just kind of like, well, why were you with her? And, I'm, and, and I think she was looking shit at a super or total superficial kind of way because as much as we base shit on looks and as as much as we might have preferences does it make sense that we don't always get what we want or that just because you have a preference doesn't mean that you settle i don't know what that says about my character or how she's summing me up as but i was just you know like i really couldn't find the heart to say like she was a bad bitch you know uh, she was definitely a whore she showed me a good time, stuck around for a while. It's just like the typical story of your dumb bitch who's with some no good nigga that, you know what I'm saying, gives her a good dick and, and he abuses her and the bitch deals with it. It's just, it's the same situation, just, you know, something kind of flipped around. And, you know, at one point in your life, you're going to play the dumb bitch until you realize that and you hopefully can evolve and move from it. And if you stick to it and you stick suffering, for some good dick and or booty i mean you're fucking yourself up you know there's no better way to to really say that and we do what we do for love or for what we have a feeling is our placement to it you know we we find ourselves in a situation putting our faith in people that we feel is gonna move motivate or gonna be able to accomplish the job i mean 